For most NBA fans, it may feel like the LeBrons and Durants of the league have been running the NBA forever. And even though it may still be a few years before their games start to decline, it's fair to question what will happen once they're no longer around. Thinking about it can make an entire generation feel discouraged, but the truth is, it should be the exact opposite. Once the current superstars decide to call it a career, there will be a new generation ready to step up and take the glory for themselves. And we're already witnessing the early signs of it. Players like Luka Doncic and Zion Williamson have already established themselves as stars with the potential to win multiple championships in the future. But among that group of young players with a huge upside, there's one that wasn't expected to become this good so quickly, Boston's Jason Tatum. When he came into the league, he was underrated, but before long, it became evident he had what it takes to become someone special in the NBA. Now he's one of the premier young talents in the league and everybody expects greatness out of him. But players don't go through such a transformation overnight. It usually takes years before they start reaching their full potential, and Tatum wasn't the exception. So when was the exact moment he became a star, and what is the next step for him? Well, let's take a look into it. During his early years, it could have been hard to get a clear idea of the kind of player Tatum could become. He wasn't the hyper-athletic dominant force that could bully the competition without breaking a sweat like Zion. He wasn't the successful athlete that had already earned multiple championships and individual awards before coming to the NBA like Luka either. Instead, he was the kind of player that still had a lot of work to do before being labeled as the next big thing. Heading into college, he already had the physical tools to start playing in the league, but he wasn't exactly going to overpower too many people. His ability to help raise a team to the next level wasn't clear either. During his lone season in Duke, he played a solid brand of basketball, but he didn't look like a superstar in the making, and when everything was said and done, his team was eliminated in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Still, it was evident he was talented enough to become a successful NBA player, and though it was difficult to tell exactly how good he could be, Danny Ainge and the Celtics noticed something about him that no one else did. So when the 2017 draft took place, Ainge caught the attention of the people when he decided to trade down and select Tatum instead of Markel Fultz or Lonzo Ball, who were both believed to be better than Jason at the time. But it didn't take long before Danny was proven right. While Ball and Fultz dealt with injuries through their rookie season, Tatum immediately became a valuable contributor for a Celtics team that already counted with the services of Kyrie Irving and Al Horford. At the end of the season, he was named as part of the all-rookie first team. And while he was mostly ignored in the race for Rookie of the Year, he became by far the most valuable player of his class when it mattered the most. Near the end of the regular season, the Celtics had one of the best records in the league. However, Irving was ruled out for the entirety of the playoffs as he needed to recover from surgery. Without him and Gordon Hayward, it looked like there were no chances Boston would survive for long during the postseason, but Tatum had different plans. Along with Horford, Jalen Brown, Terry Rozier, and Marcus Smart, he led the Celtics to their second consecutive conference finals, where they would take a lead against the Cavaliers before being eliminated in Game 7. His effort helped him break multiple records and earn the recognition of the basketball world as one of the best young talents in the league. However, his emergence would prove troublesome for the team in the following season. During year two, his game took small steps in the right direction, but unfortunately, the return of Irving and Hayward limited his opportunities to keep developing his game. The excess of talent eventually backfired on the team as they were never capable of consistently developing a rhythm or establishing roles within the offense. And when it was time for them to return to the playoffs, they fell well short of expectations and were eliminated in the second round. Their disappointing season was followed by the departures of Irving, Horford, and Rozier, as well as the arrival of Kemble Walker. But even though it seemed like the team would take a step back, there were hopes Tatum would finally be able to take a step forward as the main offensive option of the team. And that's exactly what he did. With most of the veterans gone and with Hayward and Walker taking on supporting roles, Tatum was released on the offensive end, and he immediately reminded everyone what made him special. With a larger responsibility on both ends of the court, he averaged career highs on every category and became Boston's leading scorer. But even most importantly, despite the low expectations, he helped the Celtics remain as one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. His effort was rewarded with his first appearance in the All-Star Game, but the best was yet to come. As the season was taken to the Disney World facilities, the Celtics were among the teams expected to enjoy a long playoff run. They weren't the favorites to come out of the East, and there were many questions regarding the health of Walker and Hayward. But if Tatum was capable of raising his game, they'd be capable of competing against anyone, and so he went on a mission. He increased almost all of his averages from the regular season and played a big part during their wins in the first two rounds. Behind his play, the team made its third conference finals appearance in four years, and even though they lost the series against Miami, it became clear that Tatum was capable of being the leader of a championship contender. With that, he proved what everybody already knew. He was already one of the most special talents in the league. And as long as he was around, the Celtics could present a problem for rival teams in the East. But there was also an issue with the team. In each of Tatum's seasons, he had been surrounded by multiple players capable of filling roles that could help the team perform at a high level. From all-stars to reliable veterans, there was always someone capable of lending a hand when it was needed. But things would change for the team, and the shortened season and the pandemic would become a test to the success of their program. 
The Celtics roster remained mostly unchanged throughout the postseason, and even though watching Hayward leave was difficult, the addition of Jeff Teague and Tristan Thompson was expected to provide the team with enough veteran presence to support its core. But things didn't go as expected. Walker was sidelined before the start of the season, and neither Teague nor Thompson lived up to the expectations. That forced the team to rely even more on the contributions of Tatum, Brown, and Smart. But each of them would also go through health issues. So as the first half of the season came and went by, the Celtics looked like the shell of their former selves. Both Tatum and Brown managed to take a step forward in their development, and each of them was named to the All-Star team. But without enough talent or healthy bodies around them, they only managed to keep Boston slightly over 500. People had a hard time processing what was going on, and some of them even started pointing the finger at different names to try to find the culprit to their struggles. Ainge and Brad Stevens were the first to receive the criticism, and before long, some people started to question Tatum's ability to lead the team. Of course, as we just mentioned, blaming the team's issues on a single person would make no sense. Ainge could take some of the blame for not being capable of putting more talent around its core, but not even he could have predicted that Teague, Thompson, and Walker would have such a rough season. Stevens and the team's leaders could also take some criticism, but the truth is that Boston has had to rely on unproven players that are still on their first and second seasons. To make things even worse, Tatum became infected with coronavirus at one point in the season and revealed the virus affected his production on the court to a certain degree. In other words, there wasn't much a single person could have done to make things better for the team, but their situation also helped us realize something about Jason. Since leading the Celtics to the conference finals during his rookie season, most people have taken him for granted. It has become usual to talk about Boston as a championship contender and to see them make extended playoff runs every year, but this is the first time most of the responsibility is on Tatum's shoulders. Of course, that doesn't mean he's alone. Brown has also proven to be a legitimate star this season, and once Walker and Smart make a full recovery, they'll also be capable of making solid contributions on a daily basis, but this is the first time the Celtics have needed to rely on Tatum just to be competitive. And while we all know he's capable of being the leader of a team, we must also remember he still has a lot to learn. Winning in the league takes a lot of experience, and while Jason and Jalen already have multiple years and playoff appearances under their belts, they're still learning how to carry a team. The process hasn't been pretty, but once it's over, we can be sure about one thing. Each of them will be closer to reaching their full potential. And in Tatum's case, that could mean trouble for the rest of the league. In short, we can say that JT's rise to stardom has been an unusual one. He started as a rookie that was only expected to provide support to a roster that was already full of all-star talent. But before long, he proved he had what it takes to become a team's cornerstone. Still, that has placed him in a weird situation. He's already an all-star, but still has a lot to learn. He's not a superstar yet, but has the talent to get there one day. And he probably won't win a championship in a few years, but once he gets there, there may be no turning back. But now, do you believe he'll be capable of taking the Celtics far into the playoffs this season? Or will their struggles be too much to make it out of the early rounds? Let us know in the comments. We hope you've enjoyed today's video, and if you did, remember to like it and subscribe to our channel for more NBA content. We are Courtside.